Hello everybody, this is Weird Sound, and today we are gonna be playing some Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup. It's been a while. Last time I posted on the crawl forums about this, which was probably over a week, almost two weeks ago now, I said I was gonna next show you a high-level centaur in a high-level part of the dungeon called the Snake Pits. So, here that centaur is. I don't know how much longer he's gonna last, I probably have like 30, 45 minutes to shoot right now. I guess if he survives that, we can keep going. But let's take a quick look at him and I can explain why he's in the situation he's in. Centaur mutations. I went over that in my video about Folly. He moves fast. Not very good with armor. Not good at eating meat. I also got some nasty mutations along the way. I tend to lose my temper in combat, which means I go berserk. Which makes me really, really good at killing things, but comes with all sorts of disadvantages and can kill me if it happens at the wrong time. I have a way around that nasty mutation. I have two ways around that nasty mutation. So, it hasn't been much of an issue for me at this point. Just an annoyance I like to get rid of. My vision is a little blurry, which means I sometimes fail to read a scroll. That could honestly kill me if I need to read a scroll at an essential minute and it doesn't work. And I'm a little clumsy, which reduces my dexterity by a point, which would be bad. But not terrible. I can live with that. Also, I have good mutations, too. My skin changes color to match my surroundings, which gives me some stealth, which makes me harder to detect and shoot at or just try to kill in general. However, centaurs are bad at stealth to start with, and I never made this a stealth character, so I never really noticed the benefits of that good mutation. I'm also partially covered in iridescent scales, which gives me more natural armor than my already extremely tough skin. I get like seven natural armor to start, which I think is like the equivalent of wearing split mail at no cost, which I guess is pretty cool. This character actually has a pretty good armor class. When I go back out to the screen, right now you can see my armor class, it is 20, which is pretty good. That's fairly armored. Now then, the gear I'm using right now, just for this dungeon only, I'm using this really terrible artifact halibred. The plus six minus one halibred of debt. Minus one means there's a bit less damage, but as the chopping vorpro brand, which has a bit more damage, I don't really know the numbers that well, so I don't know if it's doing more or less damage than usual. I know halibreds probably have the best weapons in the game. I'm just using it because it gives me poison resistance, which is essential in the dungeon I'm in, which is the snake pits. And usually at this point in the game, you'll have like found a ring of poison resistance or swamp dragon armor or something other than a really terrible weapon that gives you poison resistance. But this is this character's only means of resisting poison at this point. My main weapon for beating things up in melee in most other situations is this plus five, plus four, quarterstaff of Bopag, which I'm sure is like some word in Eastern language or gibberish. I don't know, you don't get to name the artifacts yourself. And I'm not that smart, so I don't know what that means. But it's a weapon of speed, which is just a tiny bit less damage, but it attacks half as quickly. So you're almost doing double damage with it. Let's return invisible, which the really crappy Halbred does too. It makes me vulnerable to fire attacks, which is kind of bad. It makes me resistant to magic and enchantment, which means people are going to have a hard time confusing me or paralyzing me or turning me into a pig. It undoes that stealth penalty I have as a mutation by giving me... I mean, dexterity penalty by giving me one dexterity back, and it turns me stealthy. Which, again, is not really good for my character. But it's a good weapon for speeding things up in melee. But I'm a centaur, which means my main weapon is my bow. And I have a plus three, plus six longbow of flame. It shoots arrows that turn into fire and really, really hurt things. I picked it up off of Nessos, the uh, really, really nasty, evil centaur boss enemy that usually appears like sometime around dungeon level 13 or 14 or 12 and he can shoot flaming poison arrows 
which you can't do. You can only shoot regular flaming or regular poison. And he can blink around and he moves real fast because he's a centaur and his arrows hurt. He's killed a few of my characters before, but I was just able to outshoot him. I'm wearing multi dragon armor, which is light enough for me to cast in if I need to, and gives me a bit more protection. And protection against sticky flames in the odd situation that I might be targeted with sticky flames. Finally, the last really important bit about this character is his spells. He's a caster, mostly a translocator. He can use apparition, which randomly yoinks items off the floor and drags them to you. Corpse rot, which turns a corpse into a cloud of festering decay that nobody really wants to stand in. Shroud of Glaboria, which is a defensive spell, which makes you a little bit harder to hit. Teleport Other, which makes a really, really nasty bad guy go somewhere else and not in your face. Phase Shift, which grants me more evasion. My evasion's at 6 right now, which is pretty bad. Phase Shift like, brings me up to 12 or 13 when I use it, I think. And that is much better than having 6 evasion. There is Controlled Blink, which is like the scroll of blinking you'll find, but it's a spell. You can use it whenever you want. I can't cast it right now because I'm wearing an Amulet of Stasis, which prevents teleporting, but also prevents going berserk, so it stops my bad you randomly go berserk mutation from killing me. I have to take it off and then cast the Controlled Blink spell if I want to get out in an emergency. And finally, I have summoned Butterflies. Also known as Spiderflies, which is just an awesome spell for any caster to pick up. It makes escaping through corridors so much easier. It just stacks the area full of friendly butterflies that you can move through. Your opponents can't. Not to kill them to get to you. And it's a level one spell, which you can just spam it over and over and over again. Until there's so many butterflies, you can just walk away. And the enemies have to chop through them before they can get to you. It's best in corridors, because the butterflies move around randomly. But in the situations where it's good, it is very, very good. Anyways, now for the current situation I'm in. I'm in the snake pits without good poison resistance. Because this character has food problems. Centaurs get hungry fast. My character uses high power spells and divided powers, which make him hungry even faster. And I've been burning through a lot of my permanent food really early. And that's been really scaring me. And a lot of the other dungeon branches have gotten really, really tough on me. So I decided to go and take this character to the snake pits, where as long as you can be poison resistant, even if it's like a really, really bad poison resistant weapon, all the corpses are edible and none of them will make you sick. They're poisonous, but if you can't be poisoned, they're not going to make you nauseous either. And yes, I need to change the color scheme to Windows 7 Basic, because my computer is too sucky to record and play a... Uh, not even graphical game at the same time. Thank you, computer, for reminding me how much you suck. Okay. I think that brings me to the adventure. I have the divine abilities of Luganu, and I'll probably call those up at some point, or I'll die without using them. I'll mention them when they come into play, because this has been enough preliminary talk. Let's go kill stuff. There's a centaur over there. Well, I'm the centaur. There's a naga over there, which is the humanoid snake creature that inhabits these snake pits. I'll wait around the corner for it to come to me. It's a naga warrior. That's... I will kite it, because that's the one good thing about Paul arms. They can kite things. Unless there's a whole bunch of things. Ugh, now I'm poisoned. Options, options. I don't want to take away my poison resistance. I will. Ooh, that was an onic. That was an anaconda in the corner. I'll have to fight that later. I'm just gonna pull out my bow and just start shooting things. Hopefully, I can do more damage to them before they can poison me to death. I only have one more potion of health restoration left, so if I get in serious poison trouble, I could die. And I would be just like, 
me slowly dying helplessly. I'm hungry, so I will butcher a Naga. I will pick up Naga meat. Well, first I'll equip my weapon that lets me eat poisonous food. Put it down for my bow. Sacrifice the other Naga to my god. Because I can't. And there's a ball python. That is like the really weak first level snake. But since it's the snake pit, all the snakes are here, even the weak ones. So sometimes you just get a freebie. I will butcher that fresh flesh. I will rest up. There's another Naga. I will uh, shoot it a bit. Oh yeah, the person I've been playing with says I should, well not playing with, somebody on the forum said I should focus more on my bows. So that's where I shall focus. I know like melee weapons have a base attack delay and you shouldn't raise your melee weapon skill over that base attack delay. I'm not sure if that should apply to ranged weapons or not. I really need to learn more about the hidden in depth unadvertised mechanics of this game but I think I'm just gonna pump my bows because I know having high bow skill means your ammo gets wasted less often and it probably does more damage and bows are my main source of hurting things as the case may be enchant armor my molten dragon armor probably needs a bit of a pick-me-up I will give it the enchant armor. And now I have 21 AC instead of 20. That was awesome. Explore. Explore. Oh yeah. Roxanne, the evil statue unique boss who used to be a witch but turned herself into a statue and can't turn back is on this floor. As long as I avoid walking right up to her, she's not a threat. Because she can't chase you because she's a statue funny but yeah those red X's are the exclusion areas where she can see you and cast evil spells on you and generally kill you she is tough if you walk up to her she will make you regret it continuing on with my exploit that's an anaconda that could be a pretty huge threat or I could you know just poke it to death with my hello whoa okay like I said, anacondas are pretty huge threats. They are huge freaking snakes. They try to smother you to death. And they are generally quite proficient at doing so. Uh, one of my old Steam friends from years ago is playing Dungeons of Dreadmore, which is actually another great roguelike game that I own that maybe I should play for you all at some point. But it's a bit more graphical and processy intensive and... I'm not sure if my computer would like to run that and record at the same time. Who knows? I get a new computer at the end of the semester, and that would be awesome. Okay. O for Auto Explore. That's a black mamba. Instead of trying to smother you to death, this poisonous snake just poisons you by biting you, and it kills you really fast because he's really poisonous. Coincidentally, the black mamba, uh, when I was in middle school, was like my favorite animal in the world. Because it's badass. Actually, in real life, black mambas are gray, and the inside of their mouths are black. So their name's just a little bit of a misnomer. They are named for the color on the inside of their mouths, not their skin. Let's see if the game describes them correctly. Uh, it doesn't mention their color. It looks... Dark blackish gray, so I'm not sure if the developers knew that the name was a misnomer or not. I'll let them slide. And I will shoot the Mamba until it comes close enough to be melee range. Then I'll have to pull out my poison resistance weapon and just chop it up. Chop it up, chop it up, chop it up. Chop it up for food. Hi there, Naga. Oh, Nagas can constrict you too now. That's just glorious. I... We'll chop up your corpse because it's bigger and will likely produce more food than a black mamba. I will sacrifice the black mamba to my god. I will eat the naga, re-equip my bow, and continue on my glorious adventure until I find another black mamba. Who I will pepper full of arrows. And then bash to death with a halibut. Hooray. Uh, 
And that's as far as I can go without trying to pick a fight with Roxanne. I'm not sure if I want to go there yet. So on to the second floor of the snake pit. The snake pit has five floors. The bottom floor is really freaking difficult. But my god gives me a special trick to get through that if I can get to that point without dying. I might not be able to do it this video. But, yeah. If you don't know what my god is and how it works, it's Logadoo. I want it to be an extra special awesome surprise when I unleash its evil powers upon the world. Because lots of early game players might not have never even encountered Longanu. Her altar is not even in the temple. Then again, you can actually start with Longanu, which I did, with the class Abyssal Knight, which my character is. There's a Black Mamba. I will just melee this one. Ooh, it poisoned me. That's not good. And then it healed itself? The hell? No, I don't like you. Go away. I'm gonna, just gonna teleport you. Bye-bye. I will rest up and recover health. I'm hungry. Do I have meat? Yes, I do. Health recovered. Yikes. Um... This is where Summon Butterflies helps. Except I'm running into all sorts of problems casting it because I'm not really that good at summoning. Well, it's just level one spell, so I will inevitably get it. And I'll just use it to block the bad guy's path and slip away deeper into the corridors. And hopefully they've lost me by now. And if they find me, I'm in the corridors. They're probably spread out. Arrows, I can use, always use more arrows because they're really good at hurting things. Especially when a centaur is shooting them out of a bow. I will shout, see if that black ramba finds me because there's one right there. Then it walked out of my, there it is. I have to go find it. I just poked it to death with arrows. Now I'm hungry. It's another anaconda. Arrow for you, arrow for you, arrow for you. Arrow, arrow. Haha, <laughs> your food. What did I pick up that... Oh yeah, scroll of magic mapping. That is actually a pretty good thing. Let's try to use a scroll of ID on a ring, see if it's any good. Teleportation, teleportation. Lightning. I don't need an empty lightning rod. Actually, I do have recharging, but I'll save that for haste. That's a pretty good thing to have. I'm sorry, I was running out of inventory room and I need to pick up some meat for the road. Ha ha ha, meat. Makes you grow big and strong, kids, even if you're a vegetarian centaur. Water moccasin, that's a pretty weak monster by this point in the game. Adder, that's a very weak monster at this point in the game. I will pull out my card or staff of bow pag and just beat them both into submission. Whatcha? It's another water moccasin. Might poison me a bit, but it's not even a threat. Rest off the poison. Pull out my bow. Continue. Oh, shit. That's Snorg. He randomly goes berserk on you. and That's not really particularly cool. He's berserk now, that's... Okay, I need a plaid. He's probably faster than me because he's berserk. And he's a huge threat in melee because he's berserk. I have some options. Just gotta have to think about which one I need to use. I could do some divine Dusex Machina on him with my Abyssal Knight powers. Then I have to fight him later in the Abyss, which is not really fun. I could, should, and would remove my Amulet of Stasis. Cast Haste out of myself to counter out the fact that he's faster than me because he's Berserk. And just run away. Until he stops berserking, it will be slowed. Where'd he go? 
He lost me. Now he's slowed. Ha. Huh. And I will just peck him to death with my bow because he's pretty harmless here. See, sometimes the best laid plans of mice men and centaurs don't always go astray. And you can kill trolls that go berserk with a bow. Wait, I was my leading thing, so not my amulet of stasis. I don't want to go berserk myself. That is Snorg's job. Amulet of stasis back on. And there's an anaconda at close range. I don't want to start a fight against an unharmed anaconda at close range. I'm just going to teleport him. He resists. Teleport. He resists. Um... Amulet off. Blink away. Shoot you, shoot you, shoot you, shoot you. And he dropped the corpse, which is good, because controlled blink is a very powerful spell, so it tends to make you very hungry. Fortunately, it was only one chunk of meat. That was a scrawny anaconda. Either that, or I just nuked it so bad with my bow that it wasn't in too many pieces or wasn't too many pieces for me to obtain any sufficiently large chunks of meat. Ooh, a battle axe. If I used axes, that would probably be a little awesome. Pick up an arrow, pick up an arrow. I think those are the ones I fired at Snorg before I had to run away because he went berserk. Butcher that snake. Pick up the meat, even though it's poisonous. I can equip my poison resistance and I just eat it if I need to. Come back here, water moccasin. I have a present for you. It's arrows gotta kill you. It did kill you. Because you fell. I'll pick up the water moccasin meat and move right along. More water moccasins. And an adder. I, I, I just bust out my hollow bread of debt and cut these guys up. Drop the old meat. Butcher the new meat. I guess I can try this on my longbow. Uh, it could be enchanted how much? Up to plus nine, plus nine. And probably won't work without enchant weapon three at this point. Yeah, I'm going to use enchant weapon one on it just to clear that scroll out of my way, which makes my longbow more accurate. Now I'll use enchant weapon two. Um, it worked. And again, the scroll fell because my vision is blurry. Try again. Nope. Now it's plus four or plus seven instead of plus three or plus six, which makes it all the more dangerous. I'll eat some unpoisonous adder flesh. And there's an anaconda. Pew, 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 pew. I should really be casting phase shift more in these fights. It's just... I probably don't need it, but it's a good habit to be in, even though it makes me hungry fast. My army of stasis needs to go on. I can melee that adder and that jellyfish. I will butcher that jellyfish. It is poisonous, but I don't care. I have my ways of eating poisonous food. So, haha. -ha. You're no match for me, video game. another anaconda just wants to give you a big hug but you shouldn't let it. it just doesn't know its own strength it'll kill you if you let it give you too many hugs black mamba so you can't do snake hugs with arrow presence and then they die before you die which is generally the whole point of this game making the things die before they make you die Actually, that's the point of a whole lot of video games in general. Not every video game. There's puzzle games and dating sims. The Sims, which is also kind of a dating sim. <laughs> in some respects. Yeah. There are games where the point isn't to kill things before they kill you, but... A lot of the best games are kill things before they kill you. And a lot of the best games aren't. 
This is not an inherently violent medium. And I probably should be getting into the politics of this at this point, because they are actually a hot button issue right now. Uh, jeweled staff and a weird watery place. This is almost definitely some sort of dangerous vault full of dangerous things on the other side. Do I have like a potion of floating or something? I do. Do I want to do something with that? Uh, I'm hungry. Let's not go there. Yet. Later. Definitely later. There's a Naga. There's the Naga. Drop a corpse, please, Naga. I'm just gonna cut you up now. And you won't drop a corpse. You are a bastard. I do not like you. But you're dead, so it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who likes you. There's a Naga Mage. Those are actually very dangerous. But not as dangerous as a centaur throwing arrows around like they're going out of style. Yay! More advertisements for Dungeons of Dreadmore if those are in the shot, which they probably are. Or it's probably cut off at the side of the shot. Snake meat. Halibred. Eat the snake meat. Sacrifice that snake to my god. Alright, let's go back to that place. Now that I have food, I can throw some high-level magic around to explore. I'll put you that Naga too. My bows have reached level 15. I am just really gonna hurt things with arrows. Oh, that's a jeweled staff, and I actually do use magic, so I might as well see what kind of staff it is. It is a staff of poison! Kinda makes sense that one of those is in the snake pit. There's Naga mages everywhere. Some they might just sometimes be careless and misplace their staffs. Maybe it was the one I killed. If it was, I guess that entitles me to have it by right of I killed you. But I don't need it because I don't cast poison magic. So I'm just going to drop it right back on the ground where I found it. It's probably gross. You don't know where that knock off stuck that. All right. Disgusting thoughts aside. Um, we're going to remove the amulet of stasis and take a blink. Amulet of stasis off. Controlled blink, blink casted. Blink. Okay, that made me hungry as predicted. Also a little bit contaminated. Um, let's use my potion of flight. Game should warn me if I'm in an empty room. That was wonderful. And my flight will probably end soon. Oh well. Actually I can still go up. I can try going up with some blinking tricks. Whoa! Why did I jump around like that? Was I like holding something down? Might have been holding down the controller alt key there and I just jumped around and found a black mamba. I'll test that in a second. Control key and move. Nope. Alt key and move. Nothing. Okay, it might have just been lag. Good news everybody. If you lag, you can jump around and miss turns and maybe it will kill you. Anyways, I just picked up some fresh meat, so I will try going up with my teleporting tricks. Oh yes, some of these snakes swim. And I'm at a huge disadvantage if I try to face a snake in the water. Like that. Going the other way. That made me very hungry indeed. And I will eat in a second, assuming that anaconda doesn't kill me. What about that? Nom nom nom. 
Butcher the Anaconda 2 for more food. Okay, so this is something I knew and you should know, and I shouldn't be silly and try to disprove it, but mysterious places that are hard to reach are often very dangerous. Not really, that was just an anaconda. That was nothing that wouldn't appear normally. Now that my contaminant... No, I'm not gonna risk it. I'm gonna put my amulet of stasis back on before I forget and go berserk at a bad time and move right on to the next floor. Like a clever gentleman would. On to floor three of the snake pits. I'm out in the open. That's wonderful. You to get you get an arrow. You get an arrow. Yeah, okay. They're just gonna all spam me with poison breath, and I don't want that. Let's find a different set of stairs. See, now I'm in the corner of the room, so I can hopefully run into these fuckers one at a time. Ooh, did I say the F word? I meant duckers, because they duck to avoid my arrows. You didn't hear any F words. Not from me. Just kidding, y'all. I'm not afraid of using that word. You might hear it a few times in my casts. If you don't like it, I apologize. I don't like abusing. I'm not like a badass action movie character who punctuates his sentences for fun with it. But it will slip out every so often, and I don't feel guilty about it. You shouldn't either. It's just language. It's lost a lot of its intensity, too, I think, since we've just been using the crap out of it over the last couple decades. I'm an English major. I muse about words sometimes. Nagas, I want to see one of you guys at a time, actually. So that way I don't have to worry about being spit poison at one at a time. There wasn't there another one down there? Did it like not find me? Or something. Probably or something. I just one shot a snake. It was a bit under leveled. Water moccasin, but I still just one shot a snake. That is feels pretty good. To just one hit kill something with your ranged weapon, especially if it's not like a completely early game easy monster. That has just like a special feeling to it. I will admit that. I will sacrifice its corpse because it felt so special. I don't really need a wand of confusion in this situation. It's another staff. Maybe it's one I can use. Oh my god! Yes! That is the staff of energy. It means if I'm holding it and I cast my spells... I don't get hungry for it. So, for example, I know this adder's coming. I will practice advanced strategies on it. I will cast phase shift, gain a bunch of evasion points without worrying about getting hungry, switch to a weapon I actually want to fight with, and kill it. Yeah, that's more Nagas than I want to fight at once again. Okay. Back to my longbow. I'm still so evasive. I might not get hit by as many of those poison bolts. That's a dead Naga. That's a Naga warrior. He's gonna have to find the long way. Oh wait, Nagas can pass. Okay. Killed the Naga Warrior, which is a high-level badass murder machine Naga. But not the highest level and most badass murder machine Naga. There are scarier Nagas deeper on the fifth floor of the snake pits. And I have a special present for those particular Nagas. I like to call it an introduction to the divine and the abyss and chaos. And all sorts of fun things you generally don't want to be introduced to in the middle of the street. Or the snake pit. Ooh, you poisoned me. I don't care for that, Mr. Naga. I, I do not care for that. You have offended my honor. I must kill you. And all your friends. And pretty much your entire race down in these snake pits. See? Another Naga. 
They have insulted my honor. I will kill them all. About my poison resistance, eat. Not only will I insult you all, I will eat your flesh and the flesh of your pet snakes. That makes sense, right? Nagas would keep pet snakes like humans would pet keep pet guard dogs? Yeah. It makes total sense. Total sense indeed. Scary Naga Mage. Speed up all you want. I'm still just gonna fill you with arrows. It's a matter of if you can do damage to me first. Because you're not any more defensive than a regular Naga. You're just better at killing. No better at not dying. What? More Nagas? No. Just none of that. Go away. Straight to Naga Hell. Which hell exists in this game. So it's pretty much the same hell as everybody else goes to. Kill you. Kill you. I'm just like the Grim Reaper of Nagas. I just one shot a regular Naga. That is pretty impressive. Maybe there is something to pumping this bow skill after all. Why? Oh, there's another Naga. That's why I'm not randomly picking items up. You don't randomly pick items up if there's an enemy in sight. Because the enemy might randomly attack you and kill you and you wouldn't be able to do anything about it. Because you're busy picking up an item. That you didn't ask to pick up. Sacrifice these corpses. Corpse and orps. Naga barding. That's like armor for a Naga's tail. Just like centaur barding is armor for a centaur's horsey bits. I don't know. Horsey bits sounds dirty to me. Maybe that's not the best term. Horse torso and legs. There we go. I'm just horsing around with y'all. But um, I'll stop. Black Mamba. Kill it. An unidentified scroll? What could that be? Probably something dangerous at this point in the game. I will use ID on it. A scroll of acquirement. That is a very awesome thing. It basically lets you make a wish for an item in a certain category and then gives you that item in that certain category. I will butcher the black mamba. Equip my black mamba eating things and eat it. I actually think you just ate Naga. They insulted my ironer. Alright. Alright. Kill the fishes. Nagas are people too. They like to keep aquariums just like you and me. Kind of makes me feel bad at killing about killing them all. But they insulted my honor and are hiding a rune of Zot. So no, I don't. No regrets. They're all dying and they're all deserving it. Remember, it's okay if it's in a video game. Just not in real life. Now then. Ooh, spell book. First I gotta kill a black mamba. I challenge you to a duel, and the winner gets the spellbook, and the loser gets dead. And seeing as you have no use for a spellbook, you might as well just let me win. Because you're a snake. Snakes can't read. See, he let me win. I get the spellbook. It is a book of ice. Hmm. Anything I can do with this. What's freezing water? That turns a weapon into an ice weapon. That isn't really useful to me. Well, actually, if I use fire and ice at the same time, because I have fire in my arrows, and ice in my magic, if I want to go that way, I could theoretically hurt a lot more things that don't get hurt as much by fire. That's for sure. Who knows? Maybe. That's right. Stay in the shallow water. Oh, wait. I'm not using my arrows, so. You know what? Fine. We will fight, Mr. Shark. 
and you will die because of it. Ha ha ha. I just killed a whole bunch of fish. Not only am I killing... Oh fuck. That's as you will. He's not quite a naga. He's an intelligent serpent. Azul, once the primary guardian serpent of a legendary treasure hoard. He was disgraced after thieves looted it while he slept. Now he slithers about the dungeon seeking vengeance against all would-be looters. He is an accomplished spellcaster, but no more deadly in melee than others of its kind. If I remember correctly, he randomly puts you to sleep and then beats the shit out of you while you're asleep. Um, how's my magic resistance? Can I resist his crap? I'm extremely resistant to hostile enchantments. So let's close the gap and try to make Lee him. Let's see if that works. It is what. Oh, I can drink a potion of might. That'll make him even more of a problem for him. Whoa! Okay, that's bad. Stasis off. Blink. Blink. Bye bye. Let's see. Oh crap. Just. Is he fast? Yes, he is. That's just great. Blink. To the stairs. Oh, this poison might kill me or hunger might kill me. See, sometimes picking fights with everything isn't the smartest move in this game. I probably should have just run for that or used a nasty trick or something else. Now I need to recover my HP, and that will take a lot of time and make me pretty hungry. Except I just ate bread, so not really. Now if I see him, I know to blink away. Or maybe I'll just try shooting arrows. Oh, shark. I can beat a shark. He's not like an evil serpent monster. That casts magic at me. Ha. You die. Now maybe I'll banish him with divine powers to a place where he would a pressure plate why not what's the worst it could do <sighs> thank you fate now those stairs are off limits to me Okay, that nasty serpent thing should be up in that corner somewhere, unless he's heard me and is like on the move and chasing me down. I will butcher the naga in case I need food later. Is my stasis on? No, it's not. I shouldn't be pounding things in melee without my stasis, or I could just go berserk. Which would not really be cool. It would be a threat to my life. You know what? I'm going to use my scroll of acquirement. And I'm going to wish for jewelry. Maybe I'll get resist poison. No, that's an amulet. Let's see. I don't really need a... Plus two ring of evasion. All that much. Amulet of clarity. I actually, that lets me go into the swamp. Cool. What's this other unidentified scroll? Vulnerability. I don't want to read that near Azul. What is that? Cure mutation? Hmm. If I drink it, it would get rid of my berserk rage. Clear out my need to use an amulet of stasis everywhere. But it would make me a bit more vulnerable because I'd lose those scowls. I think it's a worthy trade. I will drop my potions of speed for a second, pick up cure mutation, drink it. That got rid of all of them. Does it usually get rid of all of them? 
some or all. All right. I'll drop it so I don't get shattered by a random ice attack. Pick up my potions of speed. Now I will swap over to an amulet of clarity. I don't need stasis anymore. In fact, now it just gets in my way. Now I can happily spam some magic. So right now I can go phase shift. Bring out my halberd because that's the poisonous black mamba of death. Who will want me poisoned. That's an adder. I kill that. Continue on with my explorations. Here, fishy, fishy. Yeah, this character's a bit screwed up. I have him train both pole arms for pokey weapons and staves for awesome monk weapons. Because I was originally planning on going for pole arms, but I found that quarter staff pretty early and said I'll train that instead. I will eat, I'll butcher one fish for future eatings and sacrifice the other to my god. Staff of energy out. I'm just gonna blink to these stairs and explore the next floor of the dungeon. That's what I'll do. Clever. I'm sure really the cursed ring of teleportation. I have scrolls and a wand. Yeah, I'll just drop that there. I should really get back to my stash at some point. Unidentified scroll is silence, which stops things from casting spells, including me. But my character isn't totally reliant on spells, so there's something that's even more dangerous than the ring of dexterity. I don't really need that. There are probably better things I can be doing with my rings. Phase shift up. Longbow up. They're in a corridor, so only one of them can shoot poison at me at a time, probably. Haha. -ha. I killed them all. I just rode them down with a whole bunch of arrows, and that felt pretty good. Sacrifice, sacrifice. A vampiric glaive. Heals me when I hurt things. And I can't actually use pole arms. Hmm. If I wasn't so encumbered in the items department, I might pick I might have picked that up. In fact, I don't need a wand of magic darts. That's just silly. Magic darts don't hurt anybody. So it makes you hungry when you equip it, I think. Yeah, it does. I probably won't actually be using that. Oh, and I'm poisoned. I gotta wait off the poison. <laughs> Yummy. It's goldfish-tastic. Tastes like carp, because goldfish are basically a kind of carp. I've never actually eaten carp, so I don't even know what that means when I say it tastes like carp, but it does. Yeah. Advertisement on Steam for a group I joined years ago on Team Fortress. I still play Team Fortress. I still enjoy Team Fortress. But I, like many other things that I could possibly cast, I'm not sure if my computer would be willing to join me in that pursuit. That would be awesome. Okay. Anaconda is dead. I'll pick up its meat and an arrow. All right. Ooh. A ruined gate. There is probably something really fun and painful behind that. 
I will clear the rest of the floor first, and if it's dangerous, I will just blink away. Anaconda flesh, tasty. Wand of invisibility, good. I could actually do that through my weapons if I want to. And most things in the snake pit can see invisible things, so it's not particularly useful here. I'm a badass. Black Mamba just dies. Killing them all. They insulted my honor. All that jazz. My halberd is better than your halberd. And my life is better than yours because yours is now over. Because I killed you. I will try that one more time. Nope. Pick up the potion of agility, which makes for more dodginess. Eat some anaconda flesh. Pew pew, the Naga's Naga Mage. You're a threat. You die first. Then the Adder, because it's in the way. Then the regular Naga's. Then another Adder. Quick getting in the way. Alright. Rest off the poison. Naga, 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 dead. Well, will be, is. Anaconda, Naga, this is just like an enemy parking lot. They're just all waiting on the other side of that choke point for me to find and kill. I'm glad that Naga mages are like being nice and not using any of their really, really evil spells like Poison Arrow. That would be really bad for me. So now they're just hasting themselves and moving forward and walking. Into that is Donald. He is one of those adventurer unique types. I forget exactly what he does, but if he's a threat, I can teleport away. Oh yeah, he usually has a shield. It's usually like reflecting. But he decided to drop it and pick up a battle axe instead. So I will just plug him full of arrows. And he will die before he even reaches me. That was like way too easy for a snake pit level boss fight. But I bet you his shield, if I remember correctly, it's actually usually like a shield of reflecting. Let's find out. And a demon trident. That is also a pretty good weapon for me. And it's just a regular plus one dwarven shield. I do not want that at all. The demon trident is of piercings, that's just general more damage. It's actually a pretty good one-handed weapon. Probably actually a bit better than my quarterstaff if it wasn't a magical speedy artifact. So, now I'll pick that back up. And continue on my explorations. Nagas. Guess who's getting pumped full of arrows? Haha, <laughs> it's you. And you, and you. Until you're all dead. Butcher, sacrifice, all that fun stuff. My character is like such a nice guy. He's like on a genocidal purge of everything in the dungeon to please his god to get the orb. And if he bumps into you, he's just gonna kill you. See, at least he's fair. He's an equal opportunity murderer. He'll kill Nagas and snakes, for example. And humans, like Donald. And the clue why Donald is just allowed to freely hang out and roam in the snake pit. He has the same motivation as me to get the legendary orb of Za. But no! Hey, Mr. Naga, can I come in and hang with you and maybe steal your ruin of Za? Oh, sure, Donald! Come right on in! We won't try to poison or murder you or anything. We'll save that all for the player character. Awesome! <laughs> Sacrifice your corpse, Mr. Naga, as you let Donald in. It's totally your fault. Naga corpse sacrifice again. A 
pressure plate. I will not step on that one. I learned my lesson about pressure plates. Oh, right. I can't shoot you with arrows if I'm holding a halberd. Halberds do not shoot arrows. They stabby slashy sticks. Or whatever else needs to be stabbed or slashed. Depending on the situation. Ooh, fountains of water. Scrolls. And nagas. Interesting combination. I'm going to back off into the corridor. Because it's a choke. It will stop them from ganging up on me. And I can just take advantage of that. Just gun them down one at a time. Because all those nagas at once probably would have killed me. One at a time, they barely even re register as a threat in my book. A glowing agate ring. Where did I get that? I will ID it. Life protection. That is pretty good. I should try to hold on to that until I get to my stash. Um, uh, My character doesn't do anything that uses scrolls of vulnerability. So I'll just put that down. I will butcher a Nanga. I wasn't recording now and on a little bit of a time limit -y thing. I would push for my stash as quick as I could and dump this stuff off. But, nah. I'm trying to get as much fun for you out of the way in as little time possible. Quickly look at the store. Enchant weapon one, blinking, enchant armor, acquirement, noise, identify, magic mapping. Silence and gent weapon. What the hell? I'm gonna buy a scroll of acquirement and roll the dice and see what we can get with it. Ta da! I'm gonna try jewelry again. I wanna get like a ring of resist poison so I can throw that stupid halberd away and focus on my quarter staff. I pick weapon, I get like even a better bow than what I have. Probably not. A pick weapon is probably a waste. A pick anything particular is probably a waste, but it's a crapshoot. Um, armor could give me something cool, like better centaur barding. Armor, weapon, or jewelry. God, I wish I could work in Twitch. Then I could just ask stream chat if anybody actually watched me to just be in my stream chat. Gotta pick one. Scientifically, eeny meeny, miny mo, catch a tiger by his toe. If he hollers, let him go. Eeny meeny, miny mo. Weapon away. Glowing glaive. I'll drop my vampire glowing glaive and equip a regular plus zero plus zero glaive of charping. Thank you, scroll of acquirement. This has been waste of money. Brought to you by scroll of acquirement. <laughs> Glowing Dwarven Battle Axe. I'm not a Battle Axe user, but I will see it just to see what it does. It's chopping, just like the Glaive. My luck, it's plus zero, zero, two. Anyways, that's bread. That's what I was hoping to find in this. No. You didn't just poison me. You offended my honor. I was just about to maybe give up on killing every Naga in existence, but you have reconfirmed that it is a valid and worthy cause. You have been consumed by the void. And killed. Book of Envenomations. If this was a bit earlier in the game, and I wasn't in the snake pit, I might actually have considered going down the poison magic route. Yeah, I'm almost done exploring this floor. Cool. All right. On to the next one. It's a Mimic. Hi, Mimic. Bye, Mimic. Anyways, the next floor contains the Rune of Zot. If I get three of them, I can go on to the final bit of the dungeon. But it only contains one. I have to go other places that are equally as scary to get it. There's all sorts of really scary monsters. Probably some boss uniques down there. Let's hope I don't land in the room with all the... No, I don't want to turn on filter keys. Let's hope I land in the room that doesn't have all the bosses and uniques. That way I can just plan how I deal with them. 
Let's see. Go down the stairs. It's loading. It's thinking. A regular room with just a black mamba. I will shoot the black mamba dead. And I will read my scroll of magic mapping and figure out exactly where that room is. Awesome. Now I know what the whole floor looks like. I am pretty sure that is the area where the legendary Rune of Zot resides. Yes, I definitely know what it is. I've gotten the Rune of Zot out of the snake pits before. I have no clue what that is. It might be the Lava and Dragons branch of the dungeon, which I don't want a whole lot to do with. I'll explore the rest of the non Rooney room on this floor. And hopefully it doesn't kill me in the process. And then I will pull out my evil trick of fun and pleasure for the Nagas. I gotta be really careful about using auto explore on this floor because it might say, hey, you know what would be awesome? If I just drew you head first into that room full of nasty monsters. I would be like, gee, thank you auto explore. Now I'm dead. I don't want to be dead. I don't want to thank auto explore for killing me. It's a random Naga on his own. I can just kill him probably. Definitely, because I did. In hindsight, if you kill him, you know you can definitely kill him. Does that make any sense? I'm not sure. Fire. I do not like fire. Because my arrows are fire, which means they're not going to do things against things that live in lava naturally. Yikes. Too many black mambas. Haste. I'll go faster than you. And hopefully I am not too badly poisoned that I can't just rest this off. Well, stop. Eat. Rest. Rest. I'm hungry again. And this is where I need to conclude my video because my father got home and I need to get ready to go to school. Tune in next time to Tailwind the Blinker, Centaur of Loganu, here on Weird Sounds channel to see if I can get the Rune of Zot before I drop dead. Feel free to give any feedback on how I should take this character and proceed with him should he live through this situation. And thank you for watching and have a great day. Goodbye.